Welcome to the Regent Park TV weekly news show. My name is Humaira Rahman and my co-hosts today are Victoria, Javen and Fred. Today we present news that impacts the Regent Park and surrounding neighborhoods. In this episode, we present news for the following week of April 22nd, 2022 to April 28th, 2022. Today I'll be covering the following headlines. Grand opening of the World Urban Pavilion in Regent Park. Daniels Corporation announces creative work live for Regent Park artists and an entrepreneurial hub. SDP Planning Committee reviews the 2020 and 2021 SDP operating budgets. Then the Regent Park Executive Directors Network receives an update on phases 4 and 5 of the Regent Park redevelopment. Federal budget 2022 promises $4.3 billion to improve Indigenous housing in Canada. The City of Toronto expands eligibility of the Fair Pass Transit Discount Program to make transit more affordable for more low-income residents. Ontario NDP promises to cover prescription birth control under OHIP if elected in June. Then I'll be covering COVID-19 and vaccination updates as well as events and jobs in the Regent Park neighborhood. Grand opening of the World Urban Pavilion in Regent Park. The doors opened last week to the world's first hub for in-person and virtual knowledge exchange on matters of accessible housing, green construction, urban equity, and sustainable urban growth. Nestled in the heart of Toronto's Regent Park, the World Urban Pavilion is a 4,000 square foot hub for innovation, exhibition, and demonstration of the world of possibilities that places cities and towns at the heart of the sustainable development agenda. The pavilion is the culmination of a multi-year partnership between the Urban Economy Forum, UN Habitat, Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation and the Daniels Corporation. During the opening, Daniels announced a contribution of $3 million over five years to support the pavilion. The pavilion is now known as the World Urban Pavilion in Regent Park, powered by Daniels. This commitment ensures the pavilion remains an accessible and free resource for both local residents and the world's champions of sustainable urbanization. We are here today because of the residents of this community who came together back in the mid-1990s. And they came together not just to complain about their homes, which were actually falling apart, not just to talk about and think about the stigma, the stigmatization of this community, which was very, very real for a number of decades. But they actually came together to develop a vision for how this community could be transformed. Now the voices of those residents, their voices resonate right here, right now, today. And they ring true through the principles of revitalization that were embedded in a document that was already referenced, the Social Development Plan. Truly a groundbreaking document that is looked at today around the world as fundamental to this kind of transformation or revitalization. That social development plan continues to be the blueprint that guides the process of revitalization today. Those principles, they were the roadmap that brought UN Habitat, that brought CMHC and Urban Economy Forum to this neighborhood and to this moment. Local voices have, in fact, shape this transformation. And this pavilion provides an opportunity for all of us to share what we've learned working together over these many years. This new pavilion will also showcase local economic development strategies, highlighting, for example, how social procurement can drive economic health for artists, for artisans, for entrepreneurs, for caterers, we look forward to learning from our neighbors at Council Fire and continuing to learn from other new neighbors that are moving into the community. Toronto Aboriginal Support Services Council, representing 18 urban Indigenous organizations, will be moving into this building right down the hall later this year. We're also looking forward to sharing affordable rental and affordable ownership models from the platform of this pavilion. Highly replicable, highly scalable models 
that have been piloted right here in Regent Park. The pavilion is located in Daniel's Due East mixed use development on Danda Street East within a fully accessible building in an open gallery inspired space. Its unique design and multifunctional space provide opportunities for collaboration and ideas to blossom. Visitors to the grand opening were treated to a viewing of the inaugural exhibition of the pavilion titled Canada Home. This is a multi-phase exhibition that will bring attention to the Canadian innovation related to housing, communities, and sustainability. University of Toronto's Infrastructure Institute of the School of Cities combined both conceptual and practical installation in this exhibition that depict models and approaches to mixed-use buildings. The opening of the pavilion also marks the launch of a global hub for UN Habitat's signature SDG Cities Initiative, a global endeavor to set more than a thousand cities worldwide on track to achieve the 17 global goals that leave no one behind in the fight to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity by 2030. I am so incredibly proud and honored to be a member of the P Pavilion Steering Committee uh, and an active member of the SDP and the Regent Park Neighborhood Association. And that is because it allows me to work with the most extraordinary people. I've been in Regent Park for slightly under 10 years. I, I have met people who are smart and wise and tenacious, who will fight for these fundamental things that we need here. Um, people who love this community so much that they will work tirelessly with commitment and determination for equality and justice. I will also say that we have the most amazing young people uh, in, in, that any community could ever possibly want. Their energy and creativity will carry us into the future. I am very excited with this opportunity to showcase Region Park, to share my experiences, and many of the residents today are willing and able to come and share with you how amazing this wonderful neighborhood is, and that is because at the local level, at the city level, and at the nonprofit, and all of these people coming together, there is an African proverb that says it takes a whole village to raise a kid. So I want to say it takes all of us to make this planet better. So thank you and welcome to Region Park. when she's losing sight, causing her own complications in the talent room before being called. She wants to be the one that young females want to call when they need motivation, inspiration, foundation. It's much easier to uplift them. Daniels Corporation announces creative work live for Regent Park artists and an entrepreneurial hub. Last week, the Daniels Corporation, the development partner for building phases one to three of the Regent Park redevelopment, announced in a press conference held on April 13th at Daniels Spectrum Arts Center that Daniels Corporation is partnering with Black North Initiative to launch a work live studio initiative in Regent Park. According to Hila Omar Kyle, the Vice President of Social Impact at Daniels Corp, the Work Live Studio at Due East Condominiums and the soon to be completed Artworks Tower will create opportunities for Black identifying artists and creatives to rent a Work Live Studio space in the Regent Park, approximately 50% of the market rate. For us, this commitment to use real estate development as a platform for positive social impact is at the heart of everything that we do. In that spirit, Daniels is announcing three new initiatives in Regent Park. Those initiatives in collaboration with organizations and individuals doing great work across our city and across our country will foster inclusive community spaces and really add to the vitality of this already incredibly vibrant neighborhood. First, we are thrilled to be collaborating with Black North Initiative to offer three new work live spaces at our Due East and Artworks Towers development right here in Regent Park. The work, the work live spaces are just that, artist focused work studios on the ground floor and a residential living unit above with direct access to a condominium. The work studios are along the multi award winning living lane that will be complete in a few years just as the Toronto community housing building known as Block 16 North is constructed.
In addition to providing work and living space to black identifying artists and artist groups, the Work Live Studios will add to the activity and animation along the living lane. This new initiative will provide three big opportunities for artists and creatives who often face systemic barriers to accessing house uh, housing, workspaces, and ultimately economic opportunities. It's a unique opportunity to develop their practice in a dedicated space. It provides space to showcase their work, and it facilitates engagement with the local community to build relationships. Through this initiative, Daniels is offering WorkLive Studios at approximately 50% of market rate. The Work Live initiative features a social impact exchange component where artists in the Work Live spaces will dedicate some of their time and resources to the local community through engagement of programs, events, collaborations in the Living Laneway and beyond. The Black North initiative is proud to support and partner where both access and inclusion are priorities, says Dahobo Ahmed Omar, executive director of the Black North initiative. Home ownership has been an incredible priority for us at Black North. We said to ourselves that the first basic need is housing, a place you can call home, a place where you can love where you live, a place that you can have integrity, dignity, a sense of belonging, a place when you get home, you feel good. And that was important to us. So this Work Live program is especially important to me because I'm sort of like an undercover artist. People don't know this, um, but I'm a poet. I write everything I think of, everything I feel, everything I go through. And it's such a therapeutic process. It's a process that allows me to be myself at all times, a place where I don't need to hide, a place where I can just be the devil all the time. This project for us means the world because you know, you can live and breathe your passion, a place where you feel like you're living the best life for yourself. Um, it's three units now, but we're hoping to make some magic and be able to increase that. And so this Work Live program for us means uh, more than I can probably say in a few short words, but for those of you that will apply, please apply, first of all. A lot of times people don't apply because they think they won't get it. And so there's an opportunity here for all of you who are artists or undercover artists like me to take a chance at yourself and try. So please apply. Application process details will follow, but I want you to try because I think it's important that we get as many applicants as possible. It allows us to see the demand. It allows us to know that there's many of you out there that could benefit from an opportunity like this. And it would advocate for us to advocate for you. And so please apply. According to Benny Bing, the Daniels Work Live Studios will provide artists with the space to create, grow, and live a space to fully thrive at their truest, most full capacity. This initiative continues to show Daniels' commitment and belief in the power of arts to enrich our lives and build community, says Benny Bing, the inaugural artist participating in Daniels Work Live program at the Due East Towers in Regent Park. It's an honor to be here today as the in inaugural artist um, in the Daniels Worklift Spaces. Uh, I will begin with the journey of how it started. Uh, I first met Mitch, Mitchell Cohen, the CEO of Daniels, right here in this very place at my first exhibit. Um, six, uh, 2016 was when it happened. And we began a wonderful, beautiful partnership. Daniels, uh, through their art procurement program, have acquired a significant amount of my collection and have supported my career over the years. So when, uh, it, was, when it, it was brought to my attention that they were working on work lives units for artists in Regent Park and they would, they would love for me to be part of the program, I jumped to it because there is a need for a creative space in our city. We're seeing artists being pushed out of the city due to the affordability to live in Toronto. Living in Toronto is, to find a place to live in Toronto is hard. For anybody, talk less of an artist. To find a place to create in Toronto is even harder. And as a black artist, I can tell you firsthand the challenges that I have faced along the way in trying to build a thriving practice. So with this Work Live Units, this provides not only a solution, but this provides an opportunity. 
a very op important opportunity to a creative community that sometimes feels neglected. And that's black creatives in the city. There are a lot of us and we're good. We're talented and all we need is an opportunity. So this creates a wonderful opportunity for all black artists out there. Apply, bring yourself forward, put your work out there and apply to this because this will change your life. If we have more black creatives in, in, in the work live units, showcasing their greatness to the community, impacting lives of children, we can change the dynamic of what's happening in our community. So as, as, as uh, the inaugural artist, I'm, I'm happy to be there. Some of you might have seen me in the community. Some of you might know me. Um, you can come by the studio and have a look at some of my work. But we, you know, we, I really would love to see some really amazing, talented black creatives apply for this. Because I've spoken to several We've talked about situations like this. We've talked about being neglected. And when these opportunities arise, it's important that we grab it by the horns and we go for it. Hila Omar Kale uses the opportunity of the press conference to also announce the Daniels Entrepreneurship Hub. Inspired by the vision of local entrepreneurs, Daniels has launched the Daniels Entrepreneurship Hub as a resource that will provide workspace for emerging entrepreneurs from Regent Park to grow their businesses. This is located in the Daniel Due East building at 225 Sumac Street and the hub will serve as an ally for small businesses and will promote knowledge sharing and collaboration within the community. Hila announced that InfiniGuard would be one of the beneficiaries and will be provided with an office in the hub. Merwin Kagali Ali, Executive Director of InfiniGuard and Healing as One, expressed his gratefulness. Uh, and now they're announcing an entrepreneurship hub for a small business and, uh, and a Regent Park resident like me, it's, it's absolutely mind blowing. You know, Daniels has, has done so much. I think, you know, for somebody who's very passionate about the work that I do, um, you know, you could have a dream, you could have a vision, you could put in all the work, but if there's no opportunity, there's no doors open. So Daniels has been my opportunity, uh, has given me hope, has given this community hope, uh, and all I can say is thank you. The announcements were followed by spoken word art performances by Nadine Williams, Southside Santana, and spoken by T. The artists amazed the residents in attendance with their beautiful and very true to life words and emotions. Southside soldier, so you gotta stand tall even if they're aiming at your mata. For those who know fright before knowing how to fly a kite, we all come from splintered frames and flooded basements, craving embracements, moving to avoid misplacement. And a bunch of kids lost in the mirrors trying to figure out where their face is, just whole bunch of kids refusing to let go. The event ended with a communal iftar the Breaking of Fast, which is prepared by Regent Park Catering Collective and sponsored by Daniels Corp. SDP Planning Committee reviews the 2020 and 2021 SDP operating budgets. The Regent Park Social Development Plan is a community-wide initiative aimed at building social cohesion and inclusion. The plan revolves around four priority areas, each represented by a working committee. The four working groups are communication, safety, community building and employment and economic development. The body tasked with coordinating the four working groups is the SDP Planning Committee. The committee comprises of all the other members of the working groups. The April 21st, 2022 meeting of the SDP Planning Committee was chaired by Walid Kogali. The first issue that was discussed was the reconciliation of the $50,000 operating funds from the 2020 year Denise Soudi and O'Leary, representing CSI and the trustee of the Capacity Building Funds, Regent Park Social and Barrier Reduction Fund, reported that five different capacity building workshops were carried out and there is a balance of $2,190 remaining in that fund. Michael Rosenberg reminded that the committee that the only reason why the capacity building workshops were not spent was because the instructor has not sent an invoice. Denise also reported that $7,500 budget for Regent Park Social was fully paid and that all the funds in the barrier reduction for child care was spent. The remaining $5,039 in the barrier reduction fund was for the purchase of technology. These funds have not been spent because they are waiting to build locable cabinets in the community living room for holding the equipment. If the city is requiring the technology funds to be spent immediately, 
Then Denise indicated that CSI would buy the items and store them until the storage is built. Ismail Afra felt this is a good idea to purchase the items now. For 2021, Diane Mavunduse from Dixon Hall reported on the resident engagement funds that Dixon Hall is administrating. According to Diana, a disability steering committee was struck and Lloyd Pike is working at it. Diana suggested that funds could be used for youth engagement activity related to engaging youth in the SDP. The remaining funds is allocated to engagement of seniors and the delays related to change over the TCHC staff. The other fund that Dixon Hall is administrating is for bridge builders. Diana reported that bridge builders partners have been lined up and we are working on language ambassadors. The group asked if Diana can present the financials for the project that Dixon Hall is administrating at the next meeting. Diana agreed, saying they were presented at the last meeting, but she could present them again. Richard Kirwan, a city staff, wondered why the 2021 was allocated when the 2020 budget was not fully spent. Richard encouraged that all the 2021 funds must be fully spent before any operating funds for 2022 should be allocated. Diana reminded everyone that the delay for spending was because of challenges related to COVID when activities were delayed. Diana indicated the only funding remaining from Dixon Hall projects is from the bridge builder. All operation funding for 2021 budget should be spent by the end of December 2022. It was reminded by Richard that there should be also be measurable tangibles connected to the operating funds. Diana responded that the Evaluation and Benchmark Committee is working on this. The next issue that was discussed was the four residents and two organization SDP representatives to the Community Benefits Oversight Committee. Richard Kirwan indicated that there have been five organizations who have applied for the two organization positions. Richard is still awaiting the resident nomination, one from each working group. According to Joel Klassen of the Community Working Group, the working groups are still in the process of recruiting the residents to seek nomination. Walid suggested that each nominee, resident, and organization write a blurb indicating why they should be on the Community Benefits Oversight Committee representing the SDP. Others suggested it should be an oral presentation. The group agreed that it should be a blurb and that the SDP Planning Committee shall select the representatives at the next meeting. The Region Park Executive Directors Network receives an update on Phase 4 and 5 of the Region Park redevelopment. The Executive Directors Network, also known as the ED Network, is comprised of executive directors and senior decision makers of community organizations that serve Region Park. The, ne the network meets monthly. The April 11, 2002 meeting was chaired by Greg Gary the executive director of K-Club and Vicki Sage, the manager of St. Jude's Community Homes. Vicki is replacing Jim Nason term as Jim had recently retired. The first invited guest was Amal Simon from the Region Park Anti-Racism Action Project, known as the ARAP. Amal spoke about the ARAP project, addressing systemic racism in Region Park through trauma-informed capacity building is an 18-month initiative aimed at transforming the lives of residents of Regent Park through trauma-informed capacity building. The project was developed in full collaboration with the Regent Park Social Development Planning Stakeholders Table. The City of Toronto and seeks to involve over 20 local agencies and grassroots routes. A more in-depth report of the ARAP project will pre be presented in a future RPTV news report. Following Amal's presentation, the ED Directors Network invited Peter Zimmerman and Holly Carey Motimo from TCHC to give an update on Phase 4 and 5 of the Region Park Redevelopment Plans that will be submitted to the City. Following the presentation, Peter Zimmerman and Holly Carey Motimo took questions from the group. In an email shared with the community on April 13, 2024, Carmen Clayton, the Director, Office of the CEO, Boards and Rep relations and special projects with Dixon Hall announced the appointment of Mina Mawani as Dixon Hall's next CEO, effective May 2nd, 2022. In her announcement, Carmen writes, Mina is an accomplished and visionary CEO and brings extensive leadership experience in the private, 
public, and nonprofit sectors, and we are delighted that Dixon Hall will benefit from her experience, her background, passion, and her strong and intensive community relationships. She is excited to join the team and looks forward to working with all of you to serve and advocate on behalf of the communities we serve. Mina replaces Mercedes Watson, who resigned from the Dixon Hall in early February. We look forward to meeting Mina Mawani at a future executive di director's meeting. Federal Budget 2022 promises $4.3 billion to improve Indigenous housing in Canada. Ottawa is preparing to spend $4.3 billion over seven years to help improve Indigenous housing, while also giving more to help communities content with the harmful past of residential schools. Investing more this year in housing for Indigenous peoples is a priority in the agreement of the federal minority liberal government struck with the New Democrats. Expectations were high and the Assembly of First Nations alone had, had asked to see $44 billion in the budget to address current housing needs, which also include issues around repairs and overcrowding. The National Advocacy Organization had asked for another $16 billion to account for population growth until 2040. The spending plan also gives a total of $150 million to the three territorial governments to address housing needs in the North, home to many First Nations and Inuit communities. The Liberals promised last year to develop an urban, rural, and northern Indigenous housing strategy. The 2022 budget pledges $300 million over five years so that Canada's Mortgage and Housing Corporation can work with Indigenous communities to build a plan. The budget also addresses the ongoing search for unmarked graves at the former sites of residential schools. The budget includes nearly $210 million to help communities with their efforts, as well as new buildings for the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation, which is home to many residential school-related records. Ontario NDP promised to cover prescription birth control under OHIP if elected in June. The Ontario NDP is promising to help control the cost of living with free prescription birth control if they are elected in June. NDP leader Andrew Horwath made the announcement on April 21st in the heart of Regent Park. Nobody who chooses contra contraception should have to pay 30 bucks a month, year after year, month after month after month, year after year after year. Uh, it's just not acceptable and it's something that should have been dealt with long ago. Uh, if, you, if you need a, vas a vasectomy, if that's what your healthcare provider uh, and yourself decide, uh, then that's, that's covered. Uh, but for women and others, it is not covered uh, to have these other types of contraception available uh, in, a, in an affordable way. And so that's what we're talking about today. Uh, we, want in, we want to make sure that everybody has access to the contraception that they need without having uh, to add it to your monthly costs. And so uh, we're announcing that to, we will cover, the minute the election is over uh, and we take office, we will cover the cost of, co of uh, contraception uh, through our health plan. At the end of the day, uh, OHIP should be covering this, uh, uh, this particular uh, situation and, um, and it's one that, that you have this conversation with your healthcare provider, with your doctor, with your nurse practitioner, uh, and then you have to, you know, you have to get your calculator out or, you know, get your math mind going and figure out whether you can even afford it. That sh that's not a choice people should be making. It's not really a choice. It's a necessity. And so it needs to be covered. City of Toronto expands eligibility of the Fair Pass Transit Discount Program to make transit more affordable for more low-income residents. The City of Toronto announced it is expanding Phase 2 of the implementation of Fair Pass Transit Discount Program to make transit more affordable for more low-income residents. The expansion of the Fair Pass Transit Discount Program was approved by City Council as part of the 2022 City of Toronto Operating Budget. With this expansion, residents in receipt of a rent geared to income RGI 
subsidy are now eligible to apply for the program. Approximately 77,000 eligible residents receiving an RGI subsidy who meet the financial eligibility of having an after-tax family income below the low income measure plus 15 percent may receive a 12-month discount of the regular TTC adult fare or adult monthly pass. The program provides a 33 percent discount on adult single ride fares, $2.10 fare pass costs, and a 21% discount on TTC adult monthly passes, $123.25 fare pass cost. A typical adult rider with a fare pass transit discount can save almost $400 per year. This year, the city has budgeted approximately 10 $10.3 million for the Fair Pass discount program. For more information, including how to apply, is available on the city's Fair Pass discount program webpage at www.toronto.ca slash transit discount. And now Humera has a report on COVID-19 and vaccination update in Regent Park. The Regent Park Community Health Center is still running their COVID vaccine and testing clinic at 40 Oak, servicing the community of Regent Park and anyone living in an M postal code. Appointments for the fourth doses are available on the COVID-19 vaccination appointment booking page. Pfizer is available for all groups and children's aged from 5 to 11 years old are now eligible to receive their Pfizer vaccine dose. And a mixed clinic will be running at 40 Oaks on Saturday from, from 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. For more information on eligibility, testing, different age clinics, and the booking page, please visit regionparkchc.org slash COVID-19 vaccine clinic. Now moving on with the weekly COVID-19 vaccination clinic at the 519. You can now access your COVID-19 vaccine at the low barrier drop-in weekly clinic. This low barrier clinic is open for 2S LGBTQ plus communities and allies, those aged 12 and older. Moderna and Pfizer are also available and Ontario Health Card is not necessary but is good to bring along if you do have one. The first and second, first, second and third doses are available for those who are eligible. There are limited doses so it is first come first serve. If you have any questions you can contact the 519 at community at the 519.org. We now are going to be moving on to events and job opportunities in the Regent Park neighborhood. The Focus Media Arts Center invites you to learn video game development. This event is starting on April 6th to June 29th every Wednesday from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. This free in-person game development workshop will teach you how to make your very own video game. You will learn C-sharp programming and Unity Engine. This free workshop is available for youth from 15 years old to 25 and will take place at Daniel Spectrum on the third floor. You can register at www.regionparkfocus.gamedev or email info at focusmediaarts.ca. Another amazing event that will be happening in the Regent Park neighborhood is brought to you by Be Beautiful Foundation. The Beautiful Foundation is a Canadian charity that provides confidence and mental health workshops and programs for young girls aged 8 to 14. Recently, they have expanded to Toronto and are launching a large-scale free event happening on May 28th called Inspired by Her. Inspired by Her is a full no, Inspired by Her is a free full-day event in Toronto for girls aged 9 to 12 that empower them to build confidence find self-love, and create meaningful friendships while rotating through three different workshops. This event will be taking place on May 28, 2022 at the Daniel Spectrum, which is located at 585 Dundas from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This event is open to young girls aged between 9 to 12 and will be providing free lunch and snacks. Registration can be found on inspiredbyherconference.com. And for the last event taking place, Regent Park Safety Network and Canadian Red Cross is offering free training in first aid CPR AED courses. The free training is open to Regent Park residents only. Priority is given to TCH tenants. Standard first aid and CPR slash AED courses are offered on April 23rd and 24th or on May 14th and 15th. 
There is another emergency first aid course that is being offered on April 30th or on May 11th. For more information and registration, please contact MOPRP at gmx.com or call Inez at 647-670-1628. Now we'll be covering job opportunities in the Regent Park community. Focus Media Arts is looking to hire six summer positions for the community broadcast journalist. To be eligible for this position, you must be between 15 and 30 years of age and will be starting this position from July 11, 2022 to August 26, 2022. All successful candidates will be working this position from 10 p.m. to 5 p.m. and will be working 30 hours per week at a rate of $15 per hour. For those of you interested, the application deadline is on June 30, 2022. To apply, please send a cover letter and a resume to info at focusmediaarts.ca. Boys and Girl Club is now hiring for summer camp mentors for June 27 to August 12th. The application deadlines are on April 29th at 5 p.m. To apply, you must have first aid and CPR level C education, volunteer and work-related experiences, and able to attend a mandatory training on June 27th to the 30th. Thank you, and that is all for jobs and events in the Regent Park neighborhood. And that's all for today's show. My name is Javen, and my co-hosts are Victoria, Humera, and Fred. We also like to thank our team of researchers that contributed for this week's show and from our studios at Focus Media Arts Center. Thanks for watching and see you next week. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And when you do subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you never miss out on any of our content. If you'd also like more, you can find us on our other social media platforms. And if you want even more, you can look at our website.